if you have a supplement and you're going to do a practice of mindfulness, whether it be brain tap or any other mindfulness practice, do the supplement, then do the mindfulness practice, because now your body's down regulated. It's not trying to do something else. Right. And then the bioavailability of that nutrient is more available in the bloodstream, and the body will absorb it because it doesn't have to do any other work. Though there's less research, I would tend to think that the inverse is also true. Right. Right. As when you're getting the right supplementation, the right nutrients, when your brain's progressively healthier, you're getting more and faster benefit out of practices like brain tap. Right. And so yeah. I think that's one of the ways that we're seeing things starting to kind of progress in this field is not just the individual interventions mm -hmm. that can be so helpful, but which ones stack together to give the greatest possible benefit. Brain tap itself is on a mission to better a billion brains. So we're not gonna do that just with brain tap. People are too busy, so we've gotta find strategies to work together that are gonna work for those individuals. Welcome to the Brain Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Patrick Porter. Please join us on our mission to better a billion brains. Enjoy the episode and remember to share it with your family and friends. Welcome, I'm James Schmachtenberger with Neurohacker Collective. And today we've got Dr. Patrick Porter from BrainTap. We're here at the 2023 Biohacking Conference in Orlando and gonna be talking a little bit about neuroplasticity today and kind of what it is, why it's important, and what you can do to increase it. So, uh, Dr. Porter, thank you for being here. And hey, it's great to be here. Yeah. What is neuroplasticity for people who aren't familiar? So I think a lot of people hear the term, but they don't really know what that means. The reason they termed it neuroplasticity is we used to think the brain was fixed. Like by the time you're seven years old, they said, hey, this person's gonna be an accountant, this person's gonna be a construction worker, and there's no, nothing they can change because they thought the brain was fixed. But in 2000, when they, when they started having this, this is the year of the brain and then the century of the brain, and now we realize everybody has a brain, and, and that, that it can change, they, they term it neuroplasticity because even though we can't delete neuro pathways, we can overwrite them. Mm -hmm. And so the term neuroplasticity actually means the capacity to work. So how much energy do we have in the brain? How do we bring energy into the brain? What do we need to do? And then once we have that energy, can it work for us? And mm -hmm. when we get, as we age, unfortunately we know that one of the signs of brain age is how much energy we have in our brain. So if you get your brain age, they might say, hey, you have the brain age of a 70 year old and you're only 40, then that means you've done a lot of damage right. <laughs> to your brain. It, but if you have a brain age, let's say you're 70, but you have a brain age of 43, you probably took care of your brain and you have more energy in the brain. Just as an example, some people go, I'm, I'm losing my memory. No, you never lose your memory. It's 100% there because in, in brain science, they can do surgery, touch the brain in certain areas, and you have a full spectrum memory of something you didn't even want to remember. Your brain basically absorbs everything in the environment, even conversations you're not aware of. Right. But it's the recall system that we're talking about, and that's the dendrite connections and the neurotransmissions. And when people talk about neurons that fire together, wire together, and neurons that fire apart tend to wire apart, that's what happens as we age because the brain wants to conserve energy. It's an energy hog. Right. So if we're not supplying it the right energy, and that comes in the form of what I like to tell people is number one, you gotta have the right nutrients in the brain, and that's a diet. You cannot think a bad diet. And today we can't do it without supplementing, as you know, mm -hmm. because we just, we're not getting it from, our, from the foods we're consuming. Number two, we have to move and breathe. One of the most recent studies that I love to quote uh, that I just read about was sitting for three hours your brain actually loses 10% of the oxygen, which means it can't do the work. So when somebody says sitting is the next smoking, it's worse than smoking mm -hmm. because it's immediately impacting the brain. And then we need to do some kind of brain fitness. We need to get those neurons firing and wiring around new ideas and concepts, not for specific reasons, but just for capacity. In today's world, we, we need a bigger capacity to handle stress. And it, it, some people go, well, gosh, I, I'm praying to God that get rid of the stress. No, you should pray that you build the capacity to handle it because it's not going to go backwards. You know, right. the world's just going faster and faster. Yeah, so you, so you talked about what neuroplasticity is, some of the lifestyle factors mm -hmm. that can increase it. What are yeah. some of the most common reasons that someone would want to increase neuroplasticity? Well, number one, as, as we age, there's placking that happens. In, in the body, and so this, this placking is natural. It's, it's protecting you from inflammation. When we mm -hmm. have inflammation in the body, but unfortunately some people will take drugs that take the placking out, thinking they're, but they never took care of the fire. 
So that's like you have this protective coating to protect the building, and you go, I don't like that look of that, but there's a fire raging there. <laughs> they take the protective <laughs> coating, then the fire burns the building down. Right. That's what's happening to a lot of people. So they need to deal with the inflammation first, and the placking will take care of itself because the placking is actually our body's natural ability to protect us. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two is that the foods and things that we're consuming, the brain, uh, talking from the brain perspective, the brain's gonna get 25% of all the resources you put into it when it's awake, 20% while it's sleeping. So if you haven't fed the body right or given it the right nutrients, the body doesn't have the building blocks. I tell people, you can't ask God to build a temple without bricks, you know, <laughs> and you can't say your body your body's not working for you when you didn't supply it the right materials. Right. So we've got to give it the right materials to build up the brain and do what it needs to do. And right now, our lifestyle, and the number one thing that's doing that is sugar. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine wrote a book, Get Off Your Sugar. He also wrote Get Off Your Acid. <laughs> so <laughs> in uh, Dr. Daryl Joffrey, and what he's talking about is sugar, your body can either be a sugar burner or a fat burner. It can't mm -hmm. be both. So what most people don't understand in their lifestyle, stress, we have this thing called the liver, right? Mm -hmm. And most people think the liver is just this thing that cleans blood and does this thing, but it, it regulates all the hormones, it does all sorts of things, neurotransmitters and everything. But when the, when the body's stressed, the liver deploys 25 grams of sugar right away, dumps it into the bloodstream. And that's like eating half a candy bar. Right. And so the average person has 300 stress events a day because they look at their phone 300 times, the average person. <laughs> and we know that every time you look at your phone, you have a cortical response. Right. In that, in, in depending upon the propensity of the person, it could be life as a series of challenges or a series of threats. If you're the type of person that sees life as a series of threats, you're producing, your liver becomes a sugar generator mm -hmm. and then it burns out. Then we have fatty liver disease and all these other things and it has nothing to do really with what they're eating because when you're eating like that, it's gonna drive you to hedonistic behaviors like eating more candy and more sugar because the body thinks it needs that quick release. It's like trying to build a campfire with kindling wood. You just keep throwing it in there and it's gone. You gotta throw more in there, you gotta throw more in there and it never catches up. But think of fat, which is our, when you're a fat burner, which is what we wanna be, you throw that big log on there and it burns really nicely and we get that nice sustained energy. And our brain wants those in the form of ketones. So if we provide our brain with, with the right fuel, not only in foods, but also in thoughts, because, it, it, and I tell people that it's not always what you're eating, it's what's eating you, mm -hmm. you know? And so they need to, to build the capacity for your body to function. There's either thoughts, traumas, or toxins that are causing the trouble in the brain. So <clears throat> the thoughts are, unfortunately, the average person has 60,000 thoughts, 40,000 are negative. That's, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> because our, our ancestry is, you know, it wasn't too long ago we were being chased by tigers and bears and everything right. else. So we didn't know. We'd wake up in the morning. Are we going to be around? Are we going to see little Jimmy tomorrow? You know, we didn't know that. I mean, when the average life was, uh, the life expectancy even just 150 years ago was, if you were 29, you're like an old man. You know, if you were 30, 35, 40, I mean, you were ancient. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I wouldn't be an ancient, I'd be an ancient person back then, you know. <laughs> so, th but now we're looking at things, we're living longer and sometimes not healthier, but we're living longer. Right. So the whole idea is, is how can we balance this all out so we have a great life, healthy life, and longevity. And I think that's what we're seeing like here at the biohacking is people are figuring out these things. So that's why meditation, relaxation techniques, brain tap, these are things that people do to downregulate their sympathetic system. Because right. as long as you're in, ho you're in that hypervigilance uh, stress mode, your body can't function anyway. We always tell people you cannot think a bad diet. And they, and, and they go, well, I've tried nutrition. It doesn't work for me. I go, well, that's because you haven't unlocked your nervous system. Mm -hmm. As long as you're, you're metabolically locked into being sympathetically driven, which means there's no blood flow to your gut. You're not metabolizing the food because all the blood is going out to your extremities, even though you're just sitting in the chair. It doesn't know that the body doesn't know that you're not under a stress attack because right. it doesn't discern between a physical attack or an emotional attack or a psychological attack. And these are all things that are happening around us all the time. So neuroplasticity is going to help with our ability to learn new information, to retain it, to have better recall, to just sort of generally be more adaptive to life. Mm -hmm. right? And you talked a little bit about the things that you know, are common decreasers of that, mm -hmm. sugar and stress being two mm -hmm. of the biggest ones, which as a society, we're kind of screwed on those yeah, ones. Right. But, um, 
So, so there's, there's constant things that are working against us in terms mm -hmm. of neuroplasticity. We talked a little bit about some of the lifestyle factors, healthy diet, mm -hmm. good sleep, better exercise that will support it. But in addition to and sort of beyond the scope of lifestyle factors, let's talk a little bit about the role that um, meditative technologies and supplement kind of technologies can right. play into it. We have to actively build neuroplasticity right. into our life. Number one, we, we have to do things, we can't do the same thing every day. If we drive home the same way, stop by the same store, get the same six pack, watch the same news, pass out on the couch at the same time, go to bed at the same time, wake up the next morning, rinse and repeat, the brain will start unwiring itself because it, it has to be challenged. Right. So as, as we challenge the brain, now what we have to do is we have to make sure we have the right nutrients and that includes things like you know, all the supplements you, you've derived, you've, you've created, but also we need light. We need to be grounded. We need to, you know, all the things we're seeing here at the biohacking right. place. When we were born, a lot of people have a misconception. They think as we learn, our brain wires up. That's totally wrong. When we're born, our brain is totally wired. Mm -hmm. And as we learn, it unwires. Right. So it so unwires it's the, it's and rewires. The, it's, right. Yeah. Yeah. So as we unwire it, the brain, if the, if the, I tell people, if you think about running through a field that's this high in grass, first it's going to be really hard to get through that. That's the new neural pathway. But if we keep running that path every day, pretty soon that path is going to wear down and it's going to be easy to run. But that's why it's so hard because the brain will use the path of least resistance because it's, it's trying to save energy. Right. So how we build that energy up is... We can do it through breath. There's a lot of breath work that really does well. So that's mm -hmm. why we include that. While you're doing the breath work, what are you doing? You're delivering oxygen and nutrients, nitric oxide. You're, do, you're delivering all the things our body needs. Now, if you can be eating the right foods, you know, like the, the problem with what I see, and I'm not against vegetarians, but I just haven't seen a lot of healthy ones mm -hmm. because, because they, they're not getting the right balance. You know, if they're a an O-type and they're a vegetarian, I'm going to show you a sick person. I've never seen an O-type that was a vegetarian that wasn't, wasn't sick all the time because their body needs it. I've seen a lot of B-types, vegetarians, they're healthy. Hmm. So you, it's something about the way our body, everybody's different. So you got to figure out if, if you keep eating a certain way and you're not getting healthy, you got to change it. Right. You, know, you can't force the body to do it. you got to work with the body. So that's why you know, when they find the good supplement routine and, and the time of day to take it, because, you know, the upregulation of those nutrients hel helps, right. you know. And so when we, when we do those things, what we find is you start a practice of doing things differently. Number one, looking at life as a series of challenges instead of threats. Mm -hmm. That's number two. And then experimenting with foods what, and, and supplements. Because, I mean, if we walk through the, the, the convention here together, we're probably going to see a hundred different supplements and they're all, uh, most of them are claiming the same thing. They're going to biohack your brain or your body and you're going to be a Superman at the end of the week. You know, and the reality is that you've got to find the ones that work for you and it's going to take time because the brain doesn't change overnight. Right. You know, even with brain tap, when you're using brain tap, we, we have a minimum of 21 days. We ask people to do it three times a day because they don't understand when you're even brain tapping, in the morning we have to engage this brain wave called SMR, sensory motor rhythm, and that's gonna trigger neoprenephrine, cortisol, and dopamine. Now, we don't want that in the evening, because if right. you do that in the evening, you're not gonna sleep. So in the evening, we're gonna have them listen to a session that's gonna downregulate the nervous system, put them into delta. Right. That delta is gonna basically put them into a, a deep state of sleep, they're gonna get level four sleep, they're gonna detox the brain. The middle of the day, we want them to do a kind of reboot. So we have a theta training that's going to reboot the body and basically recharge their nervous system and get them ready for the day. Now, what I know is there's neurotropics and things you can take to do those same things. Right. So my recommendation is match up your neurotropic to those things. So in the morning, you want the upregulation. In the middle of the day, you want the reboot. Right. At the end of the day, you want to downregulate. So there's different supplements, really, for different parts of the day. And once you find those, those are okay. You know, the, you've got to have some consistency in something. A lot of times I'll do a supplement and they'll go, well, if you went home to everybody who bought supplements at this event, you're going to find half bottles in their house everywhere. Right. But if you gave them a prescription and you said, take this bottle, refill it four times, they're going to take it home, they're going to refill it four times. They don't understand that it's not this body that we, we both have right here. It wasn't born yesterday. This body was created two years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to do something over time 
and then measure it. I mean, in, in the Coptic religion in Egypt, they would actually have people eat a certain way for their whole lifetime. And then when they died, they'd cut them open and see if it worked. I mean, we don't have to wait that long anymore, right? Right. We have we, we, much we better have ways of accelerating that kind of research. Right. But yeah, so I mean, one of the things that you're hitting on here that I think is really important is the need for consistency when you're trying to impact neuroplasticity. When you're doing the same thing over and over, right? You're eating the same diet, you're you know, not sleeping, et cetera, your brain essentially wires to that. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna rewire the brain, right? If we're gonna affect right. neuroplasticity, that doesn't happen from a single instance. Most right. of the time that happens from a patterning, which is right. why you have people doing you know, three times a day with brain tap, because in that process of, you know, three times a day down-regulating the nervous system, you're rewiring your brain to be able to do that and then becoming way more right. capable and adaptive to the stressors of life. Right. And the same kind of thing, I think, in, you know, the supplement space, um, you know, with some of the supplements that we make, right, quality of mind probably being the key one related yeah. to mm -hmm. neuroplasticity, um, each time someone takes it, it's gonna have some support there, but it's really gonna be the consistency of it that's gonna make the greatest difference because even getting all of the right brain nutrients once can only go so far. It takes the brain time to go through that rewiring. Right. And yeah. We've done studies actually with uh, in a venous because it goes directly in and we can measure it through urine analysis and things. And we found that if they're doing brain tap at the time they're doing some of these IV therapies, they actually absorb 30% more. Right. I would think the same thing would happen with any supplement because if your body is in a fight or flight scenario, like I said earlier, you're, you're not going to metabolize and digest that food. So that's why I tell people, do, if you have a supplement and you're gonna do a practice of mindfulness, whether it be brain tap or any other mindfulness practice, do the supplement, then do the mindfulness practice, because now your body's down-regulated. It's not trying to do something else, right. and then the bioavailability of that nutrient is more available in the bloodstream, and the body will absorb it, because it doesn't have to do any other work. Right. It's basically available to take that nutrient in and then do the work, and now it's available in the form of energy, which is what we're all going for. We're in an energy right. war for what we're doing, because our mitochondria is under attack, even from the lights we're under right now. Right. You know, All these things are happening, the air we're breathing, all of these things, so we need to always be constantly looking how can we upgrade our internal environment as well as our external environment right. so we can handle those things. Well, in this area that you're pointing to is one that I'm really interested in. I'm starting to see more and more research pop up. You guys have done a lot of research on the effects of brain tap. We've done bunches of studies on the effects of our products. But now there's this kind of emergent field of looking at what are the synergistic properties of doing these kinds of things mm -hmm. together, yeah. right? And you're talking mm -hmm. about where you've already seen yeah. indicators that you know, doing meditation, doing brain tap will increase the bioavailability and the absorption of, you know, various mm -hmm. kinds of nootropics right. and supplements in general. And though there's less research, I would tend to think that the inverse is also true, right? right? As when you're getting the right supplementation, the right nutrients, when your brain's progressively healthier, you're getting more and faster benefit out of practices like brain tap. Right. And so yeah. I think that's one of the ways that we're seeing things starting to kind of progress in this field is not just the individual interventions mm -hmm. that can be so helpful, but which ones stack together to give the greatest possible benefit. Right, when, when you think about, you know, Brain tap itself is on a mission to better a billion brains. So we're not going to do that just with brain tap. Right. You know, because not everybody's going to do that. But some people need, I would say now everybody needs to supplement on some level because they're not going to get it from the foods. Right. And, and people are too busy. So we've got to find strategies to work together that are going to work for those individuals. And I think what we're seeing is that uh, there's not, it's not this or that. It's this and that. You gotta find what's gonna work for you. In, in the biohacking world, we call that stacking, right? Stacking our hacks or whatever. Or in a wellness world, they'd say stacking our therapies and you know, doing it at the same time. So you know, if, if somebody's out there trying to fix their brain, let's say, and they're not supplementing, it's gonna be impossible, unless right. they're a magician. You know, be, because the, once you have your, once <laughs> your bank account is empty, you've gotta populate it again. Right. You know, so the, the part of it, and it's not in our biological system recycles, you know, it's, it's like our even neurotransmitters, you know, the neurotransmitters at this moment are different than the neurotransmitters are going to happen an hour from now. So if we have a stressed out event, we're going to burn out of those. Yeah. So if you're under stress, you've got to maybe give a little bit more, but then once you get your body regulating, you can take the, whatever the normal dose is for that person in their weight. And so I think people need to look at nowadays, it's, it's not like we can do without 
some form of supplementation, just like you can do without brain tap if you were to get outside and you were actually able to get real sunlight and mm -hmm. meditate out in nature and ground. And I mean, we just had a study that we put out uh, with uh, Varun and um, the Ames Bo Paul, where we showed with breath work, we could balance the hemisphere of the brain. Because I wanted to show ancient traditions could do this. Right. But they had to do the breathing techniques three times a day, and it took 45 minutes each time. Right. And I don't know too many 60 and 70 year olds that are going to do that. <laughs> you know, they're, they're gonna, you know, we, we tell the caregiver, hey, this is how you work the brain tap. Put it on them in the morning, put them on in the afternoon, put them on the evening, and then magic happens over the course of three to six months. Right. You know, that they start to think better because we're bringing oxygen, blood flow, and circulation. And then whether they start that way or they start with movement or they start with supplements, you got to add all of those in to really have a real program yep. because you can't do one without the other. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's, that's one of the beauties of biohacks, right? Mm -hmm. Some biohacks are sort of doing something fundamentally new and different mm -hmm. that ancient practices or just healthy life couldn't do, yeah. but many of them are essentially just making those things way faster and easier yeah. and more accessible. Because, mm -hmm. you know, especially for those of us who live in a city, access to nature right. and to the effects that that has are actually hard to mm -hmm. come by. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can get a lot of those same benefits with something like brain tap. Yep. And then I think, you know, before we wrap, one of the things I wanted to double click on that you said was when you're talking about the importance of supplements, you said you can't get them from food. And I don't know that this is something that people are actually that familiar with because there is this kind of common idea, common narrative that, you know, if you just eat a healthy diet, you don't necessarily need anything else. And to some extent that's true, but for one, eating a healthy diet has become way harder because most of what we have access to is processed. Right. But even if you do that because of topsoil depletion mm -hmm. and lack of vitamin and mineral content and everything in the soil, it's just not actually possible for the most part to get the kind of nutrition that humans did 100 years ago. And I think right. this is one of the key areas yeah. where supplements come into play as well is being able to actually get the nourishment that our body was physiologically designed to need to be able to operate well, mm -hmm. and then when you tack on our modern life and the amount of increased stressors, the fact that we're constantly under time pressure, we have to deal with budgets, overhead mm -hmm. lights, all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. now the need goes up even more and more. And Just an example for the people watching, the, uh, a lot of people think to stop drinking you go to AA meetings, right? My dad did, it didn't help him because mm -hmm. only 2% of the people succeed because they forgot that he, what he did was not just go to AA meetings. He didn't, in fact, he didn't go to an AA meeting. He went to, he took niacin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> niacin, if you think of B vitamins, it's brain. Right. Right. So we need them for our brain. <laughs> you know, in most people, just a little niacin made a big difference. But for some reason, they stop, they don't teach that in AA. Right. They think, oh, you get up and talk about your problems. I know that doesn't work because there's not a psychological study out there that's better than 12%. So talking about a thing doesn't make it better. Right. Just like people go with food. I, I read an article, and I don't know how true it is. You would know better than me, but I thought it was interesting. They said if you could go back in time and get an orange from the 1800s, you'd have to have like 30 oranges today to equal the amount of vitamin that's right. in that same orange. So when you're talking about the food depletion, just to put it in perspective for the listener, you know, yeah, you can get it, but you've got to eat 30 of these. Where in, where in 1980 or 1880s, you could just have one. Right. You know, so here we go. And, and a lot of people are finding that they, they make them look good. Right. The taste is pretty much gone because it's, it's not the same. But, you know, the big thing is what do they look like on the grocery store shelf and how long do they last? You know, so there was a book out called uh, Bananas in Montana in January. <laughs> it's kind of a <laughs> weird name. But it came out a long time ago. Right. But it, it showed because when I was growing up in the, in the 70s, you didn't get fruit in the winter. Right. You know, the, there was no fruit, you know, in Michigan, you know, but so you had before before winter came, there was all these canned goods sales because you had to build, you had to have your can you had, or people had canning parties and they would mm -hmm. can the fruits and vegetables and they would have it. Now people think because we're getting fruits and vegetables all year round that somehow they're healthier. And like you said, they're depleted. They're, they look good but they don't have the same amount of vitamins and minerals and nutrients that we need. In fact, they usually only have three, right? So they right. don't even have all the nutrients that you need.
Yeah, people don't tend to think about that anymore because it just becomes so commonplace that you see all of the fruits and vegetables all year round and that's not how they actually grow. So right. either yeah. they're being transported all the way across the world mm -hmm. or they're being stored for extended periods, which... They're being you know. sprayed and right. basically being unnaturally preserved and then they show up at the store with a plastic wrap around them that you, you or a wax wrap or whatever right. it is and then people are eating that. But yeah, I mean, just from a nutrient perspective, even if the things that we're buying started off with high amounts of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, by the time that it actually gets to the store and then gets to you, they're usually quite old and much of that has died off and is no longer available. Right. I think that's all the time that we have yep, for right. today, but uh, thank right, you very thank much. You. Always good to get okay. to talk. Thank you for joining us on our mission to better a billion brains. Follow at Dr. Patrick Porter on social media for updates and remember to practice brain fitness every day.